The third term we have to determine is mass. Well, once again, we want to determine that from the fundamental constants g, h bar, and c. And once again, we're going to give them p, q, and r powers. And what we need to know is what are the values for p, q, and r? Well, just as we did with l, we're going to write these dimensionally. So we've got g, which is l cubed over t squared m, but they've all got to be raised to the power p, so that is l to the 3p, t to the 2p, and m to the p. Then we take h bar, which is l squared m divided by t, but all raised to the power q. And finally l, uh, sorry, finally c, the speed of light, which is l over t, all raised to the power r. And once again, we do the dimensional analysis. We'll start with m. With m, we've got a power 1 equals, the only two things we've got here are m to the power q and m to the power p, so that is q minus p, which tells, of, of course, that q equals p plus 1. Now let's look at length. Well, there are no length terms on this side of the equation, so that's 0. But on this side, we've got 3p plus 2q plus r. Now let's have a look at time. And again, there is no time term on this side of the equation. But on this side, we've got 2 p plus q plus r. But we know that q equals p plus 1. So we can feed that into these two terms here. And that gives us, in respect of the length term, that 0 equals 3p plus 2 into p plus 1 plus r, which simply gives us that 0 equals, this is 5p plus 2 plus r. That's simply calculating that out. And then looking at the time term, we've got 0 equals 2p plus q, which is p plus 1, plus r, which of course written more simply is 3p plus 1 plus r. And now we've got this term and this term, which essentially constitute two simultaneous equations. And we can subtract one from the other, and we get 0 equals 5p minus 3p is 2p, 2 minus 1 is 1, and r minus r is 0, and that gives us that p equals minus 1 half. But q equals p plus 1, and if p is minus 1 half, minus 1 half plus 1 means that q is plus 1 half. And now we can substitute, for example, in here, we have 3p, which is minus 3 halves, plus 1, which is minus 1 half, plus r equals 0. And that means that r must equal 1 half. So now we can write out the value of a fundamental m. It is g times p, which is, or to the power p, which is minus one half, times h bar to the power q, which is plus one half, times c to the power r, which is one half. And that can be written, of course, as the square root of h bar c, because those two are to the power plus one half, divided by g, which is to the power minus one half. And if you substitute in the values of h bar c and g, which we wrote down earlier, you will get 2.2 times 10 to the minus 8 kilograms. And that is known as the Planck mass. Again, derived only from fundamental constants by dimensional analysis. 
So, we have derived a length term, which is very approximately 10 to the minus 35 metres. We have derived a time term, which is very approximately 5 times 10 to the minus 44 seconds. And we have derived a mass term, which is approximately 2 times 10 to the minus 8 kilograms. And those are the Planck units that are derived only from universal constants G, C and H bar. And the interesting thing about these is that if you apply those values for length, time and mass, then G equals C equals H bar equals 1. And the question for scientists is, is there anything in nature which fundamentally considers these? Those are very small values to be used in our ordinary daily life. We wouldn't really want to measure time in intervals of Planck time. We wouldn't really want to measure length in intervals of Planck length or mass in intervals of Planck mass because they're all too small. But at the particle physics level, these may well be very useful. And certainly as far as physicists are concerned, if you can regard G and C and H bar, well, particularly C and H bar, since G, the gravitational constant, doesn't really come into particle physics. If you can regard those as one, then you lose an awful lot of terms in the formula that you come up with when you try to describe particle physics.